Sia Priyadini. He Krishna, Krishna, Sindho, Dina, Pandho, Shadapate, Gopisha, Gopika, Pandha, Radha, Pandha, Namaste. Sattakam, Shantodangi, Radhe, Vinda, Vishwari, Vrisha, Pandha, Sute, Vrindai Tulasi Devani Priyayi Kishan Sutta Kishan Bhakti Hare Devi Sutta Vachanai Mahonaha Panchatak Vatmakam Krishna Bhakta Rupa Sarupakam Bhakta Vataram Bhakta Kyam Namami Bhakta Shaktikam Shri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Gromkya, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. So tonight, we're lucky to be assembled here again to hear the transcendental topics given by our Guru Varga, our Guru Dev, and all of our Guru Paramapada. So we're praying at the lotus feet of our beloved Guru Dev, who will be arriving here in a couple of days that we can warm up our hearing capacity. We can become tuned in to hearing the divine message of Sri Krishna Kata. And to be in the association of the Vaishnavas. So, this process of bhakti that we've been discussing the last couple of days, or actually yesterday, it was the first day, last couple of programs that we had. We're discussing the subject matter of Sri Guru Tattva. And Sri Guru Tattva is so important for our spiritual life. Because without Guru, we cannot make any spiritual progress at all. You know, we are all accustomed to the prayers of uh, Guru Vastakam, uh, written by Sri Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Most of us here have been reciting these prayers. The glories of Sri Guru are discussed there. And in the prayers of Sri Naratam Das Thakur, in the prayers of Srila Satyadananda Bhaktivinoda Thakur, and so many of our acharyas. Because Sri Guru is a non different manifestation of Sri Krishna, identical to Sri Krishna. He is called Sakshad Hari Tena. That means directly, Sakshad. He is directly manifestation of Krishna. For the conditioned soul in this material world who have forgotten Krishna, he appears in the form of Guru. Because we do not have the ability in our conditioned state to understand our eternal relationship with Krishna. And although Krishna is within the heart of every living being, He is manifested in everyone's heart as Paramatma. Paramatma, another name of Paramatma is Antaryami. Antaryami means that internally, from within, He is giving all guidance. Sri Krishna also says in Bhagavad Gita that I am in the heart of every living being. Sarvasya ca ham vridi sanni vishto 
Matak Smritir Jnana Apo Hanam He says, within every living being, I am there, situated in the heart. Riddhi Sani Vishta. I am manifested in the heart. And Matak Smritir Jnana Apo Hanam From me is coming all remembrance, all knowledge and all forgetfulness. Even our forgetfulness is coming from Sri Paramatma within the heart. So that Paramatma within the heart is also the internal guru because he can give us all instructions. But we are not capable to hear those instructions in this conditioned state. Therefore, Sri Paramatma, Sri Krishna, the Supreme Personality of Godhead, He appears externally in this world as the great Vaishnav Personality, as the Mahant Personality. And the best of the Bhaktas, pure devotee of Krishna, and in that form, he now gives guidance to all the conditioned souls. So he gives the opportunity that anyone can come to him and hear the divine message that he is speaking. Because he has no other purpose in this world other than to transmit that pure spiritual message of our eternal home, how we can return to our eternal relationship with the Supreme Lord. So, Bhagavan Sri Krishna himself has told in Srimad Bhagavatam to Uddhava, his greatest, most dear devotee, he told him, Acharya Mam Vijaniyan, Navaman Ye Takarhichit, Namartya Budhya Suyeta Sarvadeva Mayo Guru. He says there, Acharya Mam Vijaniyan, O Uddhava, you should understand that actually I myself have personally appeared as the Acharya. Acharya Mam. I am the Acharya. And another one ye to Karahichit. You must never disobey. You must never be opposed to this merciful manifestation of myself, the Acharya. You should not have Martya Buddhi towards him. Martya Buddhi means that you think of him as an ordinary human being in this world. That he is like another male human being walking here and there with a material body, growing old, uh, and then dying like everyone else. You should not have Martya Buddhi, that he is a mortal being like, like us in this world. No, he is manifestation of Krishna, and he is coming within this world for only one purpose, and that is to give guidance to all the forgotten souls who have forgotten their relationship with Krishna since time immemorial. So therefore, that Sri Guru, that Acharya form of Krishna, he is greater in a greater position than all the devatas within the universe. Sarva Deva Mayo Guru. You should understand Krishna's telling that just as all the devatas have so many powers, so many abilities, Sri Guru is even greater than that because he is direct manifestation of Sri Krishna. So when the disciple develops this proper mood of worshipping the lotus feet of Guru with great awe and reverence, huh? Sri Guru Charana Padma Kevala Bhakati Sarva Vando Mui Savadhana Mate uh, Sri Nartam Das Thakur telling that one should worship the lotus feet of Sri Guru with very great care and attention. Mm -hmm. Just like when you are carrying something very precious, very delicate, and you are carrying it, you pay close attention how you are carrying that. Huh? You don't throw it here and there negligently. So similarly, 
When we come to Sri Guru, we must always have this mood of complete reverence and worship to his lotus feet. Because why? Sri Guru Charanapadma Kevala Bhakati Sattva. The lotus feet of Sri Guru are the divine abode of Kevala Bhakti. What is Kevala Bhakti? Oh, this means Krishna praying of the highest order, Braja praying. Within his two lotus feet is repose, this praying. Therefore, if the disciple takes shelter of Sri Guru, and Sri means what? Sri means Srimati. Sri means opulence. Sri means beauty. And in this regard, Sri Guru is the embodiment of the mercy potency of Sri, Srimati Radhika. So within this world, Sri Guru is also the divine representative of Radha and Krishna both. So, uh, in this way, we try to approach Guru with the proper mood. And in Shastra, it is telling us that if we receive the mercy of Guru, if he becomes pleased with you, yasya prasada, vakavat prasado. If Guru becomes pleased with you, oh, then Bhagavan becomes pleased with you and you receive Krishna's mercy. Krishna's mercy always follows Guru's mercy. You cannot directly approach Krishna. He is not accessible. He is not approachable directly. He has made all arrangements within this world to be approached through his manifestation as Sri Guru. Therefore, if someone does not receive the mercy of Sri Guru, yasya prasada na bhati gutopi, he cannot attain the goal of life. It is impossible. So there are so many statements in Shastra, so many wonderful stories that teach us the importance of worship of Guru. And Guru is the greatest of all Vaishnavas. And this tattva, called Vaishnav tattva, is also very essential for us to understand. Because without understanding Vaishnav tattva, we can easily make blunders, mistakes in our spiritual life, which will cause havoc to our spiritual progress. Because why? Because the Vaishnavas are as worshipable as Krishna, the pure Vaishnavas. They are not only as worshipable as Krishna, in fact, Krishna considers them more worshipable than his own self. Huh? And our great authority is Lord Shiva Mahadev. Huh? One day, his good wife Parvati Devi, she wanted to understand what is the most, topmost worshipable object? She required from Lord Shiva Mahadev, who is also called, you know, Vaishnavanam Yatashambhu. He is the greatest of all Vaishnavas. So he himself is also worshipping the highest personality. So she inquired from him, who is the ultimate worshipable personality? And then Lord Shiva Mahadev, he answered, Aradhananam Sarvesham Vishnur Aradhanam Param. So, Aradhananam Sarvesham, of all different worshipable objects, Vishnu Aradhanam Param. The Supreme Lord Hari, Vishnu, Krishna, the Supreme Bhagavan, Personality of Godhead, He is top most worshipable personality. So, Parvati Devi, she was feeling, Oh, but my worshipable Lord is you, O Mahadev. <laughs> you are my husband, you are my most worshipable personality. So, she was wondering, oh, maybe I'm not worshipping the highest. And then in the next line, Lord Shiva told, Tasmat Parakaram Devi, oh my dear Devi, even higher than the worship of this Bhagavan, Sri Vishnu, is Tadiyanam Samarchanam. 
those personalities who are called Tadiya, very dear to Vishnu, to Krishna. That means his eternal, eternal associates, the pure Vaishnavas who worship him eternally. Krishna becomes more pleased to see them worshipped than he becomes pleased by himself being worshipped. So in this way, to understand Guru Tattva, to understand Vaishnav Tattva properly, this will help us so much in our approach to the ultimate goal of life. So this evening, we want to again continue with this uh, glorification of Sri Guru and Sri Guru Tattva. We had so many speakers last night. We want to also continue this evening with a couple of more speakers who didn't have a chance to speak on this subject. And then we want to continue on with the subject of Vaishnav Tattva. What are the glories of Vaishnavas? And what is the glory of association with Vaishnavas, which is called Sadhu Sangha? Because Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has also told in the, his teachings in Chaitanya Charitamrita that after discussing the subject of, of associating with pure Vaishnavas and hearing from them, then Mahaprabhu boldly declared, Sadhu Sangha, Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Shastri Khoi, Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoy. He said there, associate with sadhus, associate with sadhus, Sharva Shastri Khoi, all the Vedas, all the Shastras, they're giving this message ultimately, always associate with pure Vaishnavas, the sadhus, huh? because Lava Matra Sadhu Sangha, Sarva Siddhi Hoi, even if you associate in the proper way, for even a lava, lava means if you divide one second into 11 parts, one of those parts is called lava. So if you associate purely with such sadhu for even such a moment, oh, then sarva siddhi hoy, all perfection can be attained. So in this way, our Guru Dev has traveled throughout the world giving his association and giving Sadhu Sangha and sending his representatives and preachers far and wide everywhere because this is the most essential thing for all the devotees' spiritual lives. Therefore this evening we will also hear some glorification of Vaishnavas and Sadhu Sangha. So now I want to request Shripad Sudhadvaiti Maharaj uh, to continue and to, pr to present to us the glorification of Sri Guru Tattva. To all the assembled devotees, Vaishnavi Vaishnavis, beginning with the three hundred years So, we have just heard the very smart of Shrimad Bhakti Mantra. That Krishna himself has told Uddhava, Acharya Ma I am the Acharya. So how is Krishna able to say like that? Oh, Srila Prabhupada has told, Guru is not the body. Guru is a principle. And Srila Srila Maharaj has also said that in the spiritual masters there are two things. There is he as a perfect devotee, and there is the delegation of Guru Shakti within him. In other words, there is only one Krishna who appears in different forms, and in the same way there is only one Guru who is appearing in different forms. Krishna invests himself in the proper person with that Guru Shakti. So what we are worshipping, beyond the Vaishnava who is worshipable as being Tadiya, 
We are worshiping Krishna, the manifestation of Guru Shakti within the spiritual master. Therefore, we find that all the scriptures they extolling the glory of the spiritual master. Ebayasha Gushu Tribhuma. All you glories are spread through the three worlds. And the very elegant qualifications required to be a bona fide spiritual master or Sadguru are also stressed in all the scriptures. We can say there are so many gurus, so many teachers, but there is a few Jagat gurus, a few of a special caliber which makes them worthy of being worshipped by the whole world, nay, by the whole universe, Jagat Guru. They are capable to teach everyone. So, Guru there, I mentioned this in the last class in Moscow, once he said very humbly, oh, gurus of the caliber that I occupy, there are not so many of them. In other words, it is very exceptional that we are graced by the association and initiation from someone from the level of Srimad Bhaktivinoda Narayan Maharaj, Nash Shilagurude, or Shilagurude. There's not so many gurus like him, no. especially now no, on the planet. So it is very important to understand how qualified must be the spiritual master, because with all those qualifications, the potency which he is carrying will not do the job. Srimad Shilagurude explains, between Janava Thakurani, the uh, concept of Lord Nityananda, who became the Acharya of all the Vaishnavas after the appearance of Nityananda Prabhu. All Vaishnavas of Orissa, Bengal, and Vrindavan all accepted her as the Acharya. Between her and Bipin Bihari, who was the Diksha Guru of Thakur Bhaktivinoda. We find so many ladies in that parampa. But it is mentioned by Shulashula Man. Should we accept them? No. What was their conception? What was their realization? Because he says the potency, the conception which is carried by the spiritual master when he initiates, that is most important. What kind of conception does he have? What kind of mood does he have? We know that when Guru is giving initiation, he's putting something from himself. Guru no. Devi said, there's an example. When we want to make some curds, we take milk, put it on the fire. No. Then, if you just make it boil, will it turn into curds? No. No paneer, just with boiling milk. You have to put some ingredient in it. You have to put some lemon or some you know, sodium. So in the same way, when the spiritual master is initiating the disciple, he's putting something of him. What is his conception? What is his mood of seva? That he puts into the disciple. We speak of initiation, diksha. So Sri Aghobhumaj used to say, diksha is divided into two. Diksha, diyote, kiyote. Something is given, something is taken. So what is given? Oh, divya jnana, tato jnana. What is taken? Kuda prapasha shamashaya. Oh, the tendency for sinful activity is uprooted. Or Shira Prabhupada gives an example of a fan, no, a fan of karma, sinful activities, and the Guru mercifully is unplugging the fan. Therefore, by his mercy, by his instruction, the tendency of the jiva to enjoy this world in a unrestricted way, in a sinful way, is diminished and vanquished. Now, then what is given? Divyagyan. So, Divyagyan translates literally as transcendental knowledge. So, what does that mean? Guru is giving you transcendental knowledge? Yes, through his teachings, through his books, his writings, his harikita. But here, specifically, Divyagyan refers to something particular. In Bhakti Sandhava, Jiva Goswami Bhatt is explaining that this Divyagyan specifically means Oh, the knowledge of no, the form of Krishna, the original form of Krishna. And Bhagavad Sambanda, Vishesha Gyanancha, the specific knowledge of the relationship of that disciple 
who is Krishna. This is what Guru is putting within the mantra in the same form when he's giving Diksha. He's giving that transcendental knowledge. Bhagavad Swarupukya. What is the original form of Krishna? And what is your relationship with that form? In a sense, Sandhava, Jiva Swami is explaining that the Swarup of the Jivas is emanating from the effulgence coming from Krishna's body. So this Swarup, or knowledge of that Swarup, it is first impressed in the heart of the spiritual master. Then at the time of initiation, from his heart, is impressing it in the heart of the disciple. That is Diksha. Without that potency, without one being able to transmit that, then what is the power of the Diksha mantra? One time we asked Shri Agoba in the Maharaj, and what happens? The person has not realized, and he did. Spitting a brand fire mantra into the heart, into the ear of the disciple. What is the effect? No effect. And because the topic of Guru Tapa is so important, no, and it's coming up again and again, we are asking also, or oh, should I do this? What is the power? I asked him two years ago in the morning walk in Govinda. What is the power of the Diksha Mantra? Of someone who has not achieved the level of power. And Gurudev answered without one moment of hesitation, if he has Ruchi, oh, it will be the duty of Krishna to make the arrangement for that disciple to get the full thing. And Srimad Madhava Maharaj who was there, he said, it means that Krishna will make arrangement for that disciple to approach Mahabharata to receive from him what he could have received from the Diksha Guru. Even though he is already a Madhyam Adhikari, Madhyam Madhyam, Madhyam Adhikari is divided in three, Nishtha, Ruchi, Asakti. Guru in all of his books and teachings always said that the spiritual master should be ideally on the level of Asakti. Ideally, according to Shastra, the Guru must be a Mount Bhagavad. Prabhupada in his books makes no uh, mystery about that. He says clearly, there are three levels of no, devotees, Kanishta Adhikari, Madhyam Adhikari, Uttam Adhikari, and the Uttam Adhikari is also called a Mahabhagava. And Prabhupada said, only, only a Mahabhagava is eligible to occupy the post of good. This is the ideal situation. Ideal situation is actually someone coming direct from the spiritual world. No, a Nitya Siddha coming from the spiritual world. But in life, we don't always have the ideal situation. No. This is an ideal. He's coming down from the spiritual world. He is now a Svaru Pushta. Svaru Shakti Pushta Parika is a direct associate of the Lord. Pushta means nourished. He's nourished that Svaru Shakti. He's made of that Svaru Shakti. So he's imbued with that. And therefore he can deliver the conditions. That is ideal. No, Guru always says that Kanishna Adhikari cannot initiate. And Guru Adhikari doesn't initiate. He comes down, or rather he adjusts his vision on the Madhyam platform, so on the top of the Madhyam platform, Madhyam Uta, which means on the Asakti platform. Therefore, Guru recommends that someone would initiate once he has reached that platform Asakti platform. And recently, we asked him again, that question which is very important, or oh, under which level one should not venture to initiate. He said, oh, Ruchi up to Asakti again. Why is it so? Oh, because Shri Prabhupada explained in the Chirma Charitamrita, I believe in the 24th chapter of Madhya that the spiritual master, he must be able to deliver the transcendental necessities. He must be able to give the transcendental riches. So what does that consist of? Oh, he must be able to abrogate no karma, to dissipate karma and the sinful tendency. That is one thing. So it means he must be empowered by Krishna to do that, to unplug the thing. Then he must be able to give Divya Gyan, what we just referred to before. He must be able to put in the heart of the disciples, within the mantra, in a sick form, 
the knowledge of Krishna's original form and the knowledge of the relationship of that disciple, that soul, with that Krishna. That is another of the transcendental necessity as Prabhupada told him. Then he must also be able to give Shudana, the champion of the pure holy name. Because one can only give what he has. You all know there are three levels of chanting the holy name, Namapara, Namabhas, and Shudana. If I am chanting Namapara, what can I give the person I initiate? Can I give him Shudana? If I don't have it, can I give it? My level of chanting has no bearing, no influence on the mantra I'm giving? Of course it has. Therefore, it is advised, one should initiate once one has a transcendental necessities. Also, Vishnama Chakravati Thakur, when he is commenting on the verse, Tadvigyanatam Saguru Ivadikache, oh, one should approach a spiritual master if he wants to achieve the highest good. He says, unless a spiritual master is in a direct relationship with Krishna, he has realized no. No. His relationship with Krishna, then he will not be able to cut the doubts of the disciple. It means at one point the disciple will suffer a crisis of faith. No. And whatever mercy he said, Vishwajitagam adds, whatever mercy the spirit master may be giving will not fortify. So these are very heavy statements, but they are meant to tell us. Oh, you should not settle for anything less but the best. Otherwise, you will not be able to get what you're supposed to get by accepting the initiation from a bona fide spiritual master. Therefore, the term Sadhguru is used. And Sadhguru is very rare. Now, according to the same Padakrana, now that Maharaj was talking before, Lord Shiva in the same conversation told Lord Devi Parati, Oh, Dugavan Sadhguru Devi. Oh, a Sadhguru is very rare. Such a level of spirit master is very rare. Now we know that after the disappearance of a spiritual Acharya, great Acharya, there is a chaos. And in chaos, some mistakes are made. We are seeing in our parent institution that after the little prince of Shri A.C. Bhakti Matasuni Prabhupada, oh, they tried to fill the gap of his absence by artificially creating so many successor acharyas, so many people to initiate. Actually, in the parent no, as the institution, they had up to 140 people initiating, out of which 50% unfortunately have not been able to, you know, to keep their position. No, one of two percent, you may say, oh, that's like such a But 15%, that casts a doubt on the whole, you know, operation, so to speak. So, we should not repeat the same mistake. We wish all Shira Guru there to remain with us eternally. But we know that we will not do that. He is manifesting signs of, of going more and more internal. You know, in the last festivals of where they could witness it, his presentation was you know, becoming more and more different than what he used to do. He used to be you know, speaking with such you know, clarity, but now when he was speaking, it was becoming more and more um, difficult even for those people next to him to understand what he was speaking. He's going more and more inside. So he will at some point leave our vision. He has already expressed the desires that his you know, uh, senior devotees, not only sannyasi, actually, they should initiate. And he has again and again stressed the qualifications required for that, that one should be situated in Madhya Adhikar, ideally on the top level or at least in the middle of Madhya Adhikar. No. It is most important to understand the qualifications of a spiritual master because we have seen in our parent institution havoc created you know, by you know, devotees prematurely occupying that position. So Guru is expressing the idea and desire, yes, my senior devotees should continue the mission. At the same time, it is not divorced from the qualification required to do such a job. 
is always stressing, oh, you should be at least on that level to do your job. The topic is very vast, very elevated. We can speak about it for a long time. I will stop here. I don't want to hold the floor and say in English. I don't want to speak with the English speaker. Welcome to the English speaker. Welcome to the English speaker. on the qualification of guru. Mm -hmm. So this subject matter, as he said, is very vast. And uh, we should all understand that we are very fortunate because Krishna has sent to us the topmost personality. Like Guru Dev, he was telling one time, he said, Oh, uh, you know, you are very fortunate. Because you have a guru that will not fall down. <laughs> so, so this, at least, we can say that we have certainly found such a personality in our beloved Srila Gurudev. And we want that he will remain with us uh, eternally. And actually he will remain with us eternally. Because the pure disciple, one who really follows Sri Guru, can never be separated from Guru for a moment. When our Srila Prabhupada was leaving this world in 1977 and our Gurudev Srila Bhakti Narayan Maharaj came to his room in Vrindavan and at that time Srila Prabhupada spoke with him, his final conversation. And then Srila Prabhupada told his leading disciples there, now you should all come and listen to Narayan Maharaj. So then they all came and Srila Gurudev spoke to them. They did not know him, really who he is at that time, but Srila Prabhupada knew him very well. And he knew that he's pure Vaishnava. So he told to him uh, to speak to his leaders and then Srila Gurudev said to them, you should understand that your Guru is not leaving. He is always with you. Only externally by your vision he is leaving. Because if Guru was leaving, how would it be possible for a disciple to maintain their spiritual life? Impossible. Sri Guru is always present. Just as Sri Krishna is always present in the heart, Sri Guru is also always present. So we should understand by the words of our Gurudev and by the words of all of our spiritual authorities that the Guru will always be with us if we are living with them and following their instructions. So now I want to call on Shripad Bhaktivedanta Giri Maharaj also to present this topic of Sri Guru Tattva. Hare Krishna. Om Ajnana Kimiranda Sya Gyananjana Shavakaya Chakshurumrita Minaya Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Gurave Gurachandraya Radhikaya Tadave Krishnaya Krishna Bhaktaya Tadbhakta Namo Namaha Imam Vishnu Padaya Radhikaya Priyatmane Shri Shimad Bhaktivedanta Naraya Niti Namine Vanchaka Patarudhyascha Kripa Sindhu Vyaravacha Patitanam Pavandhyo Krishna Vyavyo Namo Namaha so let me offer my humble, respectful verses and lost feet to the other Guru Dev, Shishima Bhakti Nantanaraya Swami Maharaj, Simbol Vesas, and to Shiva Prabhupada, all our Rupanada Guru Varada, Vaishnavas, Vaishnavis, and respected guests. So on the other of my superiors, Superior Sanyasi Gan, uh, I'll speak a little bit about Guru Tattva. To err is human. It's a saying in English, which means that we are not imperfect, we make mistakes. We are all conditioned souls and we make mistakes, we are not perfect. Uh, Guru Dev is perfect, he is infallible. He does not make mistakes, whatever he does is perfect. But we make mistakes, we are imperfect. Still, no one wants to be imperfect. 
Everyone in, in the heart of every person, there is a little tendency for perfection. We all want perfection. We want things to be good, to be perfect. However, because our tendency for perfection is very weak, and very imperfect, there is the inherent necessity for us to connect with the perfect. There is the inherent necessity for us to connect with someone who is perfect in order to understand what is perfection, in, in order to attain perfection. And therefore, Guru is necessary, Guru is needed. The spiritual master is absolutely necessary because without connecting with the realm of perfection, we can never become perfect, we can never attain perfection, we can never become happy. So therefore, if anyone is really striving for happiness, transcendental, eternal happiness, one has to connect with a Mahabhagavad Shri Guru. Um, in the Bhagavatam, in the 11th canto, there's one shloka that Guru Dev used to quote a lot and still does. Vayam vidya vinivesha tasya isha apetasya vipadera smiti tanmaya to buddha avajetam bhaktyaika esham guru devatatma. We are in anxiety and fear in this material world because we misidentify with this material body as men and women, white, black, Jewish, Christian, Russian, American, all designations. And because of identifying with this material body, this is because we are absorbing Maya. We want to enjoy Maya this material energy, this external energy of Krishna. We want to enjoy this maya, we want to manipulate this maya for our own benefit, for our own pleasure, and therefore we are always in anxiety. So, when we forget our, when we are in this situation, in that state, we forget our eternal identity as Krishna Das, servant of the Lord. Oh, Guru Das, servant of Guru, who is the representative of Krishna. This is not a very good uh, position to be, not a very happy. It's, we cannot derive happiness by being absorbed in Maya. Therefore, someone who is Buddha, who is intelligent, he should perform pure bhakti, unalloyed one pointed of bhakti. Pure devotional service to the Lord under the guidance of a pure devotee, a pure representative of Krishna, Shri Guru, whom we should accept as our worshipable Lord. We should accept Guru that is our worshipable Lord, but even beyond this, we should accept Guru as our, our very life and soul. Guru Devasatma as our own Atma, own soul. We should accept Guru like this. It is not easy to accept someone else as more important than myself. It is not easy to accept another person as more important than me. But our ideal is to actually accept Guru Dev as the most important person in our life in our lives. And it's a process. It won't happen in one day. Just like Sharanagati, surrender. It's a process. We come to Guru Dev and at the beginning we just see someone great, but there's no much personal relationship. But gradually, gradually we begin to understand who is Guru Dev and Guru Dev begins to inspire us in our heart to understand who he is and what is, why this relationship with him is so important, so crucial, if we really want spiritual perfection, if we really want happiness. And it's not easy because for us conditioned souls to understand we're imperfect, our, our senses are imperfect, our, our mind is imperfect, 
are intelligent, is material. It's very difficult for, for us to understand someone, to understand someone who is transcendental. Someone who is perfect. Someone who is, who is understanding and compassion is not limited. Very difficult for us to understand. So it takes time and it takes some amount of surrender and some determination to follow the process and to follow his instructions. But if we follow his instructions to chant Japa, at one time Gurudev said the most important service to me is to chant your rounds. This is the foundation. So if we don't do this, we cannot expect to understand to have any internal connection with Gurudev, because that's his first instruction. And he wants us to read his books, and he wants us to attend seminars, and he wants us to engage in Harikata. So this process, we tell new people, just come, chant Hare Krishna and be happy. All we do is just chanting, dancing and feasting. Very nice. Kirtan. But actually this path is very difficult. It's, we have chosen a very hard path. Why? Because in our path, pure bhakti, pure love of God is not cheap. And in order to attain it, we have to surrender. We have to give up something. We have to surrender our heart, we have to give our heart. And to give our heart is not easy for us. Because we have material desires, because we want our own pleasure. Because we don't want to please God. We don't want to please Krishna. Really, honestly speaking, all I want is to please myself. So therefore this process is actually hard. It's not easy. And in addition to that, um, we're very fortunate to have, who is without a shred of a doubt, the most advanced, high-class Vaishnava in the Hare Krishna world, in this, in this world today. So, it, on top of that, Gurudev is now, has now said that he wants to spend most of his time writing books and he wants to stop traveling. This is too hard for him, he's now 90 and his health is becoming frail. He wants to focus on writing the books and he's becoming less and less accessible. When I joined the Sangha in 2000, it was very easy, easy to go and see Guru Dev, to touch his feet, to speak to him. And now it's almost impossible, even for us and Yasis, to have conversation with him. Because he's very much protected, for good reasons, and it's difficult. So, how do we develop our relationship with Guru Dev? So Guru Dev is, is acting this deal of withdrawing and making it difficult to have personal relationship with him for, for a good reason because he wants us to develop our internal relationship with him. He wants us to learn how to pray to him and to speak to him internally, all the time, never forget Guru. And we can talk to him in our mind. Guru that says, if you pray to him, I hear your prayers. And if you speak to, to me, I will speak back to you. And if you ask me questions, I will answer the questions. So, the, this is this group that wants us to do internal bhajan, to worship him internally. When we chant in our Gayatri, when we chant in our Japa, and also in our daily life. We can always invite Guru Dev, please, now I'm going for a walk, can you come with me? Like this, simple example. So we have to do bhajan in separation, for the most part. We cannot, we don't have now the facility to see the Guru Dev's feet and hear from him every day and chant with him. So then, quite a few years ago, uh, one of the first devotees of Guru Dev, she asked Guru Dev, when I'm with you, and it's festival time, I'm very much inspired, and my consciousness is very high, and the Japa is very strong, and everything is very easy. But when I leave your, your physical direct association, and I go back to my home in the West, after a while, my consciousness goes down. My chanting becomes very difficult, sometimes I even stop chanting. So, what is the solution? I don't want to depend on direct association with you. I want to become strong and chant, good, do good runs and do good bhajan even when I'm away from you. So then Guru Dev taught this devotee the first lesson, the first lesson in bhajan separation is that one should have an unshakable conviction, firm belief, 
that Gurudev really loves me. Gurudev is always with me and Gurudev will never leave me. So Gurudev said this long, long, many years ago actually and it's still very true and it's becoming even more of a truth now. That if you remember these three things, Gurudev really loves me, he's always with me and he will not leave me, he will never leave me. Then we can develop, we can start working on our internal relationship with Gurudev and feel very close to him. But it's not enough to know that Gurudev really loves me, no. we also have to be willing to accept his love. And that willingness takes the form of some effort, some effort that is Sharanagati, surrendering to him, some effort that following the instructions and following the process. If there's no endeavor on our part, it's a willingness to accept his love in the form of his instructions, even in the form of his chastisement, then Gurudev says, if you don't follow what I said, I can never so it takes two, the tango. It takes Gurudev's mercy and it takes our effort and our sincere desire to connect with Gurudev. So, so many reminders that we have had regarding how to cultivate our relationship with Sri Guru. So now we want to uh, extol the glories of Sri uh, Sadhu Sangha. And uh, what better person to speak about Sadhu Sangha than Sadhu Maharaj? <laughs> Um, I'm, I'm, I'm requesting uh, Western devotees to please borrow uh, radios or uh, mobile phones from your neighbors in order to listen to English translation because it will be in Russian also when she put name and speaks. Каждый раз, когда ты учишь урок, 
экзаменатор проверяет. И Сила Гурдев каждый раз, когда он видит нас, когда он смотрит на нас и сканирует нас своими голубыми глазами, он заглядывает в каждое сердце и спрашивает, «How are you? Как твои дела?» В таком случае ученик должен сказать правду. Сила Гурдев говорит, тот, кто в этот момент он говорит, «I'm okay, Гурдев, все хорошо». Ученик переживает разрыв атомной бомбы. Происходит эффект атомной бомбы, все разрушается. То есть никогда нельзя что-то утаивать от Шива Гурда. Кто такой Вайшнав? Это очень глубокая татва. Часто мы думаем, что Шива Гурда — это Вайшнав. Это подлинный Вайшнав такой. Остальных Вайшнав порой даже часто не можем оценить по э, достоинству. Поэтому очень важно всегда находиться в Анугате, всегда находиться под руководством тех вайшнавов, которые посвятили всю свою жизнь служению Махапуруши, великой личности. И, разумеется, самой Махапуруши находиться под руководством Махапуруши, вайшнава, чтобы научиться разбираться в Вайшнава Татве, чтобы научиться видеть, кто есть кто в этом мире. Есть определение в Шримад Бхагаватам в 11-й песне трех видов Вайшнавов. Вайшнавы будут говорить еще немало об этом. Кто такой Каништа, кто такой Матьям, кто такой Бхутам. Шриба Гурдар говорит для каждого из нас. Я хочу, чтобы все мои ученики в этой жизни стали мадхимами. То есть они достигли ништи, говорит. Я хочу, чтобы все мои ученики достигли ништи. Что значит платформа ништи? В этом стихе Сима Бхагаватам из 11-й песни говорится. И... Ишвара тогда не еще палишь, еще дышат свеча, прямо майтра клипу опекшу, крути сама тема. Так матема вайшнав – это тот, кто видит четыре категории личности. Первая – это Ишвар, то есть Господь Кришна. Вторая категория – это Дадинешу, то есть верные слуги Кришны, вайшнавы. Палишь еще – невинные люди этого мира, объекты попробуют. И дышат свое означает завистники. Те, кто настроены против, иначе говоря, демоны. И каждый из этих категорий матима вайшнав, то есть вайшнав среднего уровня, испытывает определенный вид взаимоотношений. По отношению к Ишваре у него есть према. Према не обязательно высшее, высшее для любви, любви Господа, но какой-то из уровней на пути к чистой преме. То есть, например, ручьи, затем асакти. То есть он любит Господа. Поэтому он получает всю его милость. Кроме того, что самое потрясающее, именно Матрима Вайшна, то есть Вайшна в среднем городе, он дает милость живым этого мира, людям, обусловленным душам этого мира. Почему? Потому что они в иллюзии. И Матрима Вайшна, он может привести их к, стопа, к стопам Махапуруши, великой души, Махабхагавата Вайшна. Поэтому он дает милость. Это очень важно. Дальше Тада Динеша. Вайшна среднего уровня, он прекрасно видит, кто есть кто. Он прекрасно знает, как общаться с каждым из видов Вайшнава. И те взаимоотношения, которые он строит с Вайшнавом различных уровней, они являются, они построены по принципу Майтри, то есть дружественных взаимоотношений, дружеских взаимоотношений. Прямо Майтри, конечно, вот это Майтри свойственно Матьяму Вайшнаву. По отношению к старшим Вайшнавам, к Махабхагавату Вайшнаву, у него села Юкта Майтри, то есть он служит им и так выражает свою любовь. По отношению к среднему Вайшнаву, своего уровня, у него дружеские взаимоотношения Майтри и Юкта Майтри. То есть любовь основана на дружеских взаимоотношениях. И к младшим Вайшнаву, к конечно Вайшнаву, у которых нет еще твердой веры, он испытывает Крипа Юкта Майтри. То есть он являет им милость и помогает им. Вот этот путь путь любви, бхакти путь любви. Поэтому Мадри Вайшнав, он знает, как любить всех и каждого. 
вот это та основа, как сказать, та ось, вокруг которой вращаются э, взаимоотношения, э, взаимоотношения со всеми остальными категориями. Матый Мавашнафан как бы находится э, посередине, посередине. И он видит все под руководством Махапарта Затем э, третья категория, о которой я говорил, э, Балишешу – это невинные люди этого мира, невинные люди этого мира, которые э, просто забыли свои взаимоотношения с Господом, они полны нас, но они не питают рождественности к Господу и его преданным. Поэтому это объект проповеди. Мадья Магашна – это опытный проповедник, именно он может проповедовать. Строго говоря, конечно, Магашна в средней категории проповедовать не может, но если он находится под строгим руководством, а Баду – это Магашна, Чисто Вайшнава, осознавшего свои вечные отношения с Кришной, он проповедовать может. Вот. Шива Гурдева однажды спросили Гурдев, мы выходим на улицу и поем Харинаму, поем Святое Имя. Но что мы поем? Нам аппаратку поем, оскорбление Святого Имени, совершаем 10 оскорблений, Шива Гурдев. Что же нам делать? И Гурдев сказал, я вас посылаю на улицу, я вас посылаю петь. В прошлом году, в 2009 году, в Италии, э, на утренней прогулке Шива Гурдева спросили, Гурдев, э, вы сейчас говорите мало, в основном вы даете возможность говорить старшим предам Саньяси и так далее. И мы говорим, когда вы говорите, что Шабда Брахма, это чистый звук. Но когда мы говорим, Шабда Брахма это или Шабда Брахма, допустим, э, кто-то говорит из ваших предыдущих учеников, вы иногда поправляете. Но Шарда Брахма ты или не Шарда Брахма? Что Гурдев ответил, как вы думаете? Это моя катха. Это мой киртан. Это моя катха. Даже если Вайшнав только-только начинает свой путь, он еще не Вайшнав по-настоящему, он, как сказать, Прахрита Бхакта называется. Преданный материалист. Даже тогда он может стать подлинным представителем Гурдева. И такой преданный быстро достигает нишки. То есть платформы твердой веры. Вот этого хочет от нас всего будет. Это хочет будет. Поэтому каждый из нас, как ученик, должен сделать цель для своей жизни. Это обязательно. Достичь нишки, когда хочет. В этой жизни. Что это такое? Это уже другое. Это очень интересная тема. Очень интересная тема. В одном городе, где мы были с программой, одна предная слушала обсуждение этой темы и затем спросила, так что? Мадима Вайшнав, Вайшнав среднего уровня, он, так как он практикует там не обвелась это что не слышали этот стих, то есть будут обсуждать еще этот стих потом, то есть у него нет никаких желаний, кроме служения Кришны и так далее, когда он служит телом ему речи 24 часа в сутки, потом у него есть перевернутые банки, все эти вещи. Ну так что, так его уже больше ничего не интересует, ни наука, ни культура, ни искусство. Не как это история, философия, теология, сеология и так далее, и так далее. Его больше не интересует. А, культура, литература, да, 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 все это. Выходит, что нет. Выходит, что его интересует Кришна. Он всюду видит Кришну. Вот. Но дальше его прямо зреет, 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 он становится махабака. Точнее, сперва все связывает с Кришной. Затем у него просыпается ручь, то есть очень глубокая привязанность к всему, что связано с Кришной. Сперва к баджану, процессу, воспитать святых имен и всего прочего, потом к баджанеи, и потом асак это уже эстетическое влечение. Даже если он видит, казалось бы, какой-то соблазняющий объект этого мира, он вспоминает о Кришне. Если эта девушка в фиолетовом платье, он вспоминает Кришну. Он даже не отворачивается, он просто вспоминает Кришну. Вот. И затем он становится мама и последняя категория, о которой я говорил, упекша. Упекша – это м, те, кто зависимые, зависимые люди. По отношению к зависникам, Мадима Вайшна, простите, упекша – это безразличие, которое Махабхат Вайшна проявляет к двишатцу, зависникам. К двишатцу, к зависникам Махабхат Вайшна проявляет упекшу, то есть безразличие. Вот. Таким образом, это Мадима Вайшна. Мы молимся э, в песне Алибайшного Такур, которую поем часто, порой каждый день. Чая бега думи, чая доша шоди, чая гуна де волдаси. Чая сатсанга де хаме амали, босичи санге раяше, босичи санге раяше. 
Вайшнав Такур, я молю тебя о том, чтобы ты убрал с моего пути шесть, а, то есть обуздал шесть побуждений, помог мне обуздать шесть побуждений органов чувств. Это первый стих у Падышамрите. Убрал с моего пути шесть препятствий. Это второй стих у Падышамрите. Дарвал мне шесть 